till the next set of cross trusses are just inside the boiler a few inches. The spotter will help by calling down the alignment of trusses status to the callout leader by radio. Any corrections can be made by having single truss rows catch up. Workers now can manually push the forward truss and make sure it's between the side guide rollers and the end is about 12 inches to 18 inches behind the main roller. A locking pin is placed in front of a truss vertical member to prevent any forward movement while installing the next main truss. To join two main trusses together, a splice connector is placed into the top and bottom main truss cords. Workers will then place one pin on both top and bottom locations to secure the splice. The workers will lift a standard truss section from the truss cart with the monorail hoist and set it on the launch frame. Workers will now slide the sections together manually on the rollers. With the two truss sections butted together, workers will now insert the splice pins into the openings. Inserting the pins one per side and then inserting the remainder of the pins allows Workers will now install the pen keepers simply by placing the large opening side over the groove section of the pen and then push down. There are four pairs of keepers per connection. Next, workers will install the appropriate cross truss onto the tabs at the rear of the main truss. The cross trusses are also stored on the truss carts and use ball pens for connection. The ball pins secure the cross trusses to the main trusses. The pins also complete the hinge joint necessary to swing the cross trusses once inside the boiler. Once all the trusses are aligned, workers will reach in through the door openings and manually rotate each cross truss towards the main truss adjacent to it. Then workers will reach in through the openings on the side of the main truss where the spring-loaded end of cross truss mates with the locking tabs on the main truss. Simply grab the center of cable by hand or reach in and gently pull it towards themselves. This will depress the locking pins on top and bottom of cross truss and allow it to seat on the locking tabs on the top and bottom of main trusses. When the cables are released, the spring-loaded pins will seat into holes in the locking tabs. Visually or physically touch the top of pins to make sure they are completely engaged. Inspect the cable, it should be taut. This typically indicates that the pins are engaged. Once both sets of the last cross trusses are just inside the boiler, workers will need to secure the set of cross trusses closest to the front wall of the boiler first. This will allow enough space for the cross trusses to be rotated. Once the set closest to the boiler wall is secured, the second set of cross trusses will require the use of the six foot lone reach bars. Each reach bar has a small T on the end. Then workers on the hinge side of the cross trusses will grab and rotate the cross truss to the adjacent main truss with the reach bar. Workers on the pinning side will reach in with the bars and catch the rotating cross truss. Then place the T-shaped end on the center of the cable and slowly draw the depressed pins on the cross truss into the upper and lower tabs on the main truss. Workers will finish up this last set of trusses by inspecting the pin locks both top and bottom. A flashlight or additional boiler lights will help. These two cross trusses will later support the starter deck panels. The bottom of the truss cord. Once all have made contact, Workers shall begin to simultaneously raise the trusses by rotating the ratchet handles. It is very important to raise the trusses as evenly as possible to avoid damaging the connection joints where the cross trusses connect to the main trusses. Workers will then continue to raise the platform to the level position. Eight four-foot float levels placed on the top of each truss will help bring the system to a level position. There may be a marker on the receiver from where it was leveled during the last installation. Use this marker as a guide, but still use the float levels to double check.
The workers will install the first starter decks by working the area just under their feet. After a few sections are in, they can place the corner section and then begin working toward the center of the boiler. All the starter decks will be labeled, starting with left number one, and go up successively to the center of the platform with the new door on the opposite side. Workers can work from both sides toward the middle. This video illustrates it with one single opening. The new opening will be added to this video after the upcoming installation is complete. Workers will continue to work their way across the boiler and work out toward the rear wall. One or two workers can concentrate on finishing the starter decks while the others install the larger decks. The workers will simply continue to install the deck panels evenly until the supervisor decides where to leave open areas for ventilation purposes. The workers will try to work as evenly as possible at this point. The lifelines clearly shown here are supported by safety ropes dropped from the penthouse and attached SRLs are connected through the truss doors. The decking system is now fully installed. You can see that the panels create a tight-fitting sealed platform. The openings left here, under the nose, will be contained by a handrail. The staircase shall be left in place with bottom handrail removed so that there is a safe egress from in and out of the boiler. The workers are finishing up the handrails in front of the openings and the scaffold contractors have begun their layout for the upper furnace scaffolding. The next step would be to install the climber stage rigging. For scaffold installers, all companies shall submit a drawing to Mid-American Energy Loiza personnel before erecting the system scaffold. WinSafe will analyze the leg loads and overall weight. WinSafe will then advise Mid-American Energy where and what size floor sill beams are required. This safeguards all workers that the entire system is safe and within the 4 to 1 safety factor ratio. This video is not intended to be used by itself for full training. Please see detailed instruction manual and supplied reference drawing. This video, while helpful in visualizing the installation, lacks many of the details that are necessary for installation. Please review the installation manual for all details. Consult your Mid-American Energy Loiza supervisor or call WinSafe Corporation at 1-888-954-0009 before installing.